So lately I've been questioning the validity and effectiveness of the various Agile implementations I've seen across the industry um, in, in my time working in it at least. And so is everyone else apparently. I've noticed it's, it's sort of a recurring topic as the years go on, but especially recently I've noticed it crop up a bit recently where everyone's again starting to question the validity of, of Agile and its processes and the whole mindset behind it. I want to go over sort of my opinion in this video and kind of the, the opinion I've formed over sort of I guess the last few years and uh, maybe challenge some of the ideas out there and and kind of clarify a few things which I'm seeing a lot of the same mistake being made when it comes to this discussion so I want to sort of address some of these mistakes being made and there is some valid arguments out there for you know agile being bad and things like that but it's not as simple as that it's often misinterpreted so I'm going to go into sort of my opinion of agile and scrum and compare it with waterfall and things like that sort of discuss what works what doesn't work and my opinions going forward about how certain teams certain dynamics could maybe improve but before we move into that of course uh the last video again there was a lot more attention on that than i was imagining there was ever going to be so thank you for that um it's been the most popular video i think to date that i've ever done um definitely was not expecting that so yeah again thank you for the support a lot of interesting discussions i'll say on that video um some very good ones and some yeah definitely interesting ones uh some food for thought as well and uh yeah it's, it's been great so great to see and hopefully that continues going forward but yeah if you're new of course uh hello i'm steve-o relatively new to the industry about four years or so uh, self-taught software dev um and i basically just talk about my experiences in tech uh my experiences sort of coming into the industry from a sort of non-technical background of things I've witnessed, sort of opinions that I've formed over that time. That's kind of it, really. Um, there's no real focus beyond that. It's kind of just me speaking my mind. Uh, some people like that. Some people don't. That's fine. If you do, of course, like, subscribe, and uh, hopefully you stick around for more. So before we dive into the argument of whether Agile actually works or not, we probably need to discuss what Agile actually is, because this is the part where people misinterpret the most. Uh, and confuse Agile for a process uh, around the idea of Agile, like Scrum or Kanban, right? Um, but first of all, uh, if you don't know about it, Agile Manifesto, agilemanifesto.org, is where you'll find the, I guess, the rulebook for Agile. But the rulebook for Agile is effectively just four sentences, right? It is a mindset, that's all it is, in its simplest form, it is just a mindset based on these four sentences, which kind of go in contradiction to the whole waterfall framework which existed uh, at the time is the sort of de facto uh, project management kind of framework. So basically, four sentences, I'll read them out to you now. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And responding to change over following a plan. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Basically, it refers to the idea of context being king. Right? If you're in constant um, sort of talks with stakeholders, with the client, with your team, those interactions all create context. And that allows uh, changes and things like that to happen much faster. Various sort of processes and things that would normally stand in the way of that don't have to happen because everyone is on the same page, everyone understands what's happening, and everyone understands what they're trying to deliver. Working software over comprehensive documentation, continuously delivering shipping software is preferred over comprehensively documenting software and the process of developing that. That's all there is to that there. It's the idea of continuously delivering smaller pieces of functional software. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation, basically coming back to the idea of collaboration, although um, this more focuses on the idea of not deciding business requirements or all of the business requirements pre-development. This basically allows for change within the development cycle and the staying in the loop, staying in constant collaboration with the customer, with the client and uh, the team constantly working together. Um, it allows that process to be more flexible. And if things need to change during the process, which they inevitably do in most projects, this whole idea of uh, being able to pivot uh, requirements and things like that is where this comes from. And responding to change or following a plan is kind of a combination of the above three, really. It's all this stuff allows agile teams who follow these sort of four kind of principles here uh, to respond to change, to respond to change requirements, to, you know, be in the loop, be in context of these sort of changing requirements and understand what they're trying to deliver. And of course, deliver, you know, not just like documenting, planning, designing, and then eventually delivering something. 
some time in the future. This is the idea that we are able to deliver functional software continuously uh, and iterate on that as well and change it as time goes on. And it does say at the bottom here, um, while there is value in items on the, the right, we value the items on the left more. Um, so we're not dismissing the idea that, you know, processes, tools, comprehensive documentation, we're not dismissing the idea that that stuff is, is useless, right? There is a time and a place for that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, depending on your, your team, the size of the team and things like that, you know, some processes, um, some documentation might be necessary. But in a sort of agile working mindset, we always or we always should value the stuff on the left. That is the whole point of the Agile Manifesto. That's what we're trying to uh, adhere to here. So now that we know what Agile is, let's talk about what Scrum is. Scrum is not Agile. If you couldn't guess already, um, Agile is just the idea, the mindset of the four principles that I mentioned before from the, the Agile Manifesto. Scrum is more than that. It's uh, it's a management framework designed around the idea of Agile. And it's a way of companies implementing the Agile sort of mindset into their way of working. Uh, Scrum in itself is not Agile and doesn't guarantee that a team is Agile. It's just a way of trying to implement that. There's flaws in it, obviously, which we'll get into. And I found this nice little uh, chart here, uh, which looks a bit chaotic and is almost kind of foreshadowing the various opinions on this and the flaws in it uh just just because of how chaotic it is there's a lot of different things going on here and you know that's because there is a lot of different things that happen in scrum a sprint and a scrum uh sort of team is as it says here one to four weeks but i tend to find that it's usually two weeks the sweet spot for most companies and most teams tends to be two weeks uh, I found anyway. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've ever done a one, one, three, or four week sprint. I never have personally, but anyway, moving on. Product owner or project manager or whoever is in charge of that side, the product team, will communicate with clients, customers, and predefine, right? Predefine requirements, which you might have heard me already talk about when talking about waterfall. Um, I'm not trying to foreshadow too much here, I swear. Um, so, <laughs> All these requirements gathered, right, before sprints, we then create tickets from them, we then refine those tickets, we estimate them, we sprint plan, put all the stuff relevant to that sprint into the sprint backlog, and then the sprint begins. Stuff will be pulled into the sprint in kind of a Kanban fashion, I'll explain Kanban a bit later, um, but obviously it's restricted to whatever's in the sprint backlog and, you know, the scope of that sprint. And... Basically, throughout that two weeks, the team will work on the stuff in the sprint backlog. That will then end, and then towards the end of that, you'll have your review of the sprint, and you'll tend to you tend to ship something. That's the idea of you know you're still trying to continuously ship software. So at the end of the two weeks, your the idea is you've got something some kind of deliverable, right? If it's a successful sprint, and you'll have a retrospective at the end, which talks about sort of. You know, what went well, what didn't, and what can we do going forward into, you know, the next few sprints and take actions away from that uh, that can be can be implemented to, to improve processes and things and continuously improve processes. During the sprint, obviously, as well, I kind of uh, skipped over the fact that, you know, every day uh, there's various meetings and stuff that take place, like uh, daily stand-ups to discuss uh, amongst the team what went wrong uh, or what we were working on the day before, any sort of blockers that they had, and then going forward into the day, you know, what they're going to be working on and if they need to catch up with anyone or, you know, anything like that. But it's generally a very short conversation or it's supposed to be. There might be other sort of meetings as well, like pre-sprint planning, for example, um, towards the end of a sprint for, for the next sprint. And it, it, they kind of almost start to blend into each other as well. And uh, you end up with loads of other meetings sprinkled in between product demos and stuff, you know, the the next sprint, there's maybe a, a demo for a new feature coming in and that all these sort of meetings start to add up, right, among all the other sprint ceremonies going on. And that kind of leads to my next point here, where there's a lot going on here, right? <laughs> there's a lot of processes, there's a lot of things to keep track of, a lot of time spent in meetings, which software engineers don't like. Probably been able to tell already, scrolling through tech Twitter right now, <laughs> um, it's... Uh, it's not good for like delivering code. Uh, you don't really get any time to deliver anything a lot of times. If there's a lot of meetings, if there's too many meetings, you spend a ton of time context switching. And that, again, goes directly against this idea of, you know, continuous to delivering, but also 
processes being there when they shouldn't be and context switching and changing requirements while this is still a thing that scrum does not within sprints it shouldn't but often it does and this is one of the flaws of scrum as well is a lot of the product people you know it, this whole idea of agile um in scrum kind of goes in direct odds i guess with what they're trying to what their vision is and what they're trying to do what they're trying to achieve requirements often change during the sprint and scrum if done correctly doesn't really allow for that uh, but what a lot of teams end up doing is they'll try and pivot or you know move the goalposts or change the definition of done however you want to call it during sprints and that throws the whole thing out the window it throws sprint planning out the window it throws estimates out the window it throws sprint burn down charts out the window right all these other meaningless metrics that come up with scrum as well to measure progress none of it means anything because the scope keeps changing during sprints because we're trying to be agile right we're trying to be flexible we're trying to make things quickly we're trying to be speedy and that's I think that's the idea that a lot of product um, teams, a lot of maybe less technical people in teams have is, you know, the whole idea of agile is to be fast, right? And to, to deliver things quickly, to be able to change at a moment's notice. That's not necessarily what it means. If you go to the Agile Manifesto, you can see that that's not exactly what the agile mindset is. And a process like Scrum, which with all these processes in place and pre-planning and things like that, all kind of amounting to what is effectively many waterfalls don't really allow for that kind of change. In summary, uh, while Scrum is a valid framework for managing software development teams, um, it's often implemented poorly or incorrectly, uh, as as we can see in various examples out there, uh, as I'm sure many people will find uh, in the comments of the video uh, have experienced as well. You know, this the whole idea of Scrum kind of goes directly you know, at odds with most project management teams that try to implement it. Uh, it's it's basically many waterfalls, right? It introduces a lot of process, a lot of pre-planning, a lot of documentation to an otherwise process light mindset. It introduces a lot of context switching. It introduces a lot of meetings that don't have to be meetings necessarily. Um, it invites a lot of micromanagement and less autonomy into a flexible smaller team usually which should have more autonomy and should be self-managing and um, ultimately it's just not a one-size-all-fits solution for everyone but every company out there now seems to be trying to implement scrum in however way they interpret it and nine times out of ten it just doesn't work it's quite rigid it's quite process heavy which is kind of ironic given that it's based on Agile because Agile is none of those things. So I think what we're trying to say here is Scrum bad, right? I think everyone is on the same page at this point. Scrum bad, Agile good though. Agile can be good. And if you don't think so, I want to try and convince you of that and convince businesses that Agile can work even if Scrum doesn't for you. So I want to propose the alternative of Kanban. Uh, if you don't know, Kanban or Kanban board is just basically a table with columns that tickets go on to and you can track the progress of that ticket throughout. So you've got like a backlog uh, column, you've got uh, sort of maybe a to-do, you've got uh, in progress, you've got uh, in review and, and done and, or in testing or however you want to organize that basically. It just is there to track the progress of a ticket. That's the whole idea of a Kanban board. And these exist in Scrum as well, but they only exist sort of within the context of a sprint. Kanban board uh, in Kanban is just the project. It's not the sprint Kanban or a board or anything. It's not um, just for that sprint. It's just, that's your project board. That's everything that's in progress right now. You've got one backlog, all the tickets get fired into there and there'll be some kind of refinement, I guess, some kind of definition of done, you know, is this ticket what we expect it to be? And then it'll, it'll just go into the backlog. Um, it'll be based on a requirement at the time, which could change uh, at any given point, either you know within the next few days, within the next few weeks. It allows for that because there's no predefined planning session, there's no sprint planning or anything like that. It just is what it is at the time. You then work on that, you then deliver it. If it changes, another ticket's made, and then that gets put into into the uh, you know, in progress whenever someone's able to pick that up and you just continuously work through it. There's no real end to that. It's more just you're trying to meet certain milestones, goals, or in business terms, you might refer to them as OKRs, uh, objective key results, right? They're just 
certain goals, certain, uh, I guess, pieces of functionality within your, your product or whatever that you're trying to meet, you're trying to ultimately work towards. Uh, and this whole idea, this whole framework, which I, I kind of like to refer to, I guess, as Scrum Light, you know, it's all the good, the good parts of Scrum, scrap all the bad parts of Scrum effectively. It's very process light. It focuses on sort of productivity and efficiency, autonomy as well. There's very little sort of micromanagement in these kind of processes, which I think is why most companies are scared to implement it as well. And uh, yeah, it just focuses on getting stuff done, right? It, it focuses on deliverables and delivering software. Um, and just not getting bogged down in process. While obviously you'll probably still have sort of daily stand-ups and things like that, that stuff's all just there as a part of meeting that whole uh, expectation of collaboration within an Agile team, right? Um, collaboration is super important, and in a Kanban team, there has to be a lot of collaboration for it to work as well. It tends to work very well among smaller teams. It tends to work very well among experienced teams who know what they're doing effectively. That's where that autonomy comes in. You just allow people to go off and do their thing, right? It can be very effective. And again, if done correctly, it's probably one of the best ways to implement Agile that I've seen, but it's not very commonly used, at least in comparison with Scrum, which is the more process heavy and I guess it's the, the one that management teams and companies like to look of more because they, it's a lot more process heavy. So there's more sort of definition to things and how things are done. And it kind of just leans into the whole idea of waterfall again. And I think a lot of human nature doesn't allow sometimes for us just to let go of that sort of stuff. Um, being quite process light, autonomy and things like that, a lot of companies are scared to, I guess, allow for that stuff. And that's ultimately their downfall in a lot of cases. I thoroughly believe that Kanban's probably the way forward for a lot of these teams that aren't able to implement Scrum properly. But yeah, it's just a matter of them realizing that, I guess, before, I guess it's too late. But anyway, um, that's sort of my take on the whole thing. Agile is not necessarily bad. Scrum is certainly bad in a lot of cases because it's often implemented poorly and quite often Kanban is the solution. That's sort of my take. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments and uh, you know, tell me about your experiences with, with Scrum and things like that. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. I, I'd, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. But anyway, thank you for watching the video. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed this sort of stuff, if you want to hear more from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.